Le Gilco, the manager has spoken in recent weeks about the difficulty of having to pick a team for this final and perhaps the more difficult task of leaving some players out. You have played in the Champions League final before. I wonder if you can take us back to 2013 and can you let us know how you felt when you got the news you were going to be starting in that game and obviously what it would mean to you to be selected again to play this weekend? First of all, I, d I don't know if I want to remember that day because uh, obviously uh, we were not able to win it. But uh, jokes aside, um, it was a great ach achievement for us, for that young Dortmund side, you know, to get into the Champions League final, beating Real Madrid in two legs in the semi-final. Um, you know, it just felt like it just felt like we were on a run, and uh, we were not we weren't we weren't not thinking much about anything. And that was maybe also the good side of it, that uh, we, were, we went just out on the pitch, you know, to play, to enjoy, to have fun, to win. And um, there, was, there was not much else. And um, that's why I don't really know. I don't really know um, what the feeling should be like, you know, because obviously everyone is different. Um, there are some maybe thinking a lot about that final already in, in, in previous weeks, you know, after reaching it. There are maybe some who were able to just put it on the side, to focus on the rest of the Premier League um, and maybe start thinking about it right now. Uh, at the end of the day, I feel like it's just about being, being prepared and everyone knows his, his self uh, the best, uh, being just uh, yeah, prepared as good as possible you know, for that, for that special game, obviously, for everyone, not just for us as Man City. I'm sure it's for the Chelsea players the same. So... Yeah, um, it's 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 probably the biggest game um, of all of our lives, of our careers so far. And uh, yeah, uh, obviously we will try everything that's possible uh, to be able to lift the trophy at the end of the 90 minutes. And uh, that's what we are targeting. That's what we are preparing for. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Andy Hansen. Hello, Kai. Hi. Um, I just wonder about, uh, obviously you, you've experienced the Champions League final yourself, but there's not much other experience in the squad and apart from the, the manager, of course. How, how important um, a role do you and the, the manager have um, with, with, in, you know, in bringing to the squad um, this week what you know about this occasion? I personally wouldn't overthink our roles, to be honest. Um, I mean, of, of course, the manager always has the responsibility, you know, to... Uh, try to work on the right tactics, on the right approach for the game. But I don't think it changes anything because it's the Champions League final. I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure he prepares us for every single game as, as good as he can. Um, so that's why I don't feel like there's much I could, I could give, I could tell my teammates from, from my experience from the final in 2013, because at the end, it's a big game. It's a it's a it's a final, and every final is different. Um, everyone deals with the pressure um, different of, of of playing that that big game. So what I just try to do is um, I can just try to you know keep up the levels as as high as possible. Um, try to try to get everyone working still 100% on the training sessions, on every single training session, you know, like not to um, leave just 1% out of it. So that's what I'm doing. That, that's what I'm trying to do all season long. So it doesn't change anything in the approach of, of, of having the last week now before that big game. Um, and as, as one, of the, one of the captains, that's also my res responsibility. So that's what we are trying to do with the whole squad. And um, yeah, we know the responsibilities and um, that's, that's what we're doing. Thank you, Andy. Uh, David Anderson. Hi, OK, thank you very much for your time. Uh, OK, just ask you about Thomas Tuchel, because you had your last season at Dortmund when he was manager, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, just you know, what were your impressions? That was his first uh, management job, wasn't it? Um, no, I think that he was in Mainz before Thomas Tuchel. Um, but for me, um, to be honest, it was it was it was great to have him one more year. I honestly didn't 
expect much when it was announced that she's gonna be the the new manager. I was even in talks maybe to leave uh, the club, uh, but I remember I had one phone call with him, and um, he kind of presented himself to me, you know, when I was uh, on holiday in the in the summer break, and it was actually a really good call. Um, he um, tried to explain me a few things, how he wanted us to play, how, how he wanted us to train. And every single thing he said, he really proved during that season. And I was surprised how well um, he was uh, working with the team, um, how well his approach to the game was, how well known he was in terms of tactics. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I think he taught me a lot. I think he's a great manager. I've said it um, over the last few years, several times, I, I, I'm sure. Um, and now it's just nice for me that he's able to prove it also in the best league in the world, in the Premier League. Um, and that he did so well with Chelsea in this very difficult season also for them. Uh, and was able to, to, to get them into the, into the Champions League for the next season. Which maybe a lot of people didn't expect when he was presented. So that proves to me that he's a great manager. Uh, he proved himself. Um, he's a really good guy. I really like him and his coaching stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to play against them. Thank you, David. Um, Dom Dietrich. Hi, okay. How's it going? Hi, all good. Um, Thanks. Good stuff. Uh, I just wanted to ask, um, what advice would you give to a to a young player like Phil Foden going into a, a Champions League final on Saturday? He's one of the leaders in the dressing room, and how important is he to this team? Phil has become one of our main players, to be honest, throughout the season. He's doing incredibly well. Uh, he improved in so many things and so many details of his game, uh, mainly in taking also the right decisions at, at crucial times. Uh, for, su for such a young age, it's really, it's really impressive. So I wouldn't recommend him to change anything, to be honest, from what he did over the last few weeks. He's doing great. He's... Um, He's one, one of the game changers for us, and he can be one also on Saturday. Um, but there's no need to put anyone under pressure because everyone, everyone has done the right things in the last few months in such a difficult season. So I don't think there's much we should change. It's just about maintaining that level, that, that form, and uh, going with that, with that attitude into the game Saturday. That's, that's enough, not more. Thank you. And uh, next we go to Arthur Quexada. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, Uke. Are Hi. you are you listening? Yes, I hear. Yes. All right. All right. No, so my question is about Fernandinho. Uh, he could he could become the the first Brazilian player to to leave to leave to a Champions League as a captain. What kind of leader uh, is Fernandinho, and uh, what was his importance for the the change of attitude? Of the team this season, especially in the in the bad moment of the season. I really can't impress how important Fernandinho is to us as a group. He's immense. Um, obviously, he didn't get maybe as much game time as others in the squad in this season, but he exactly knows his role, he exactly knows his responsibility, he exactly knows what he has to do and what he has to say in the right times as well. And this is what a leader is. A leader is not always the one maybe who is scoring the goals or who is uh, playing every single minute, um, who has the best passing rate, whatever. A leader is someone who is not, to, who is not scared also to say in bad moments the truth and um, to have that sense of empathy inside himself and uh, to understand his personal role. And even though his personal role from a sporting perspective was maybe not the easiest one, the way he handled it was just incredible, I think, during this difficult season. And he's a big part of our success in this year. And when he played, he played amazing. So this is, this is what I expect from from, from, from a group that is functioning, you know, that every single player, uh, and that's, that's obviously a dream uh, that is never really able to achieve because all the different characters that you have, but if you wish to have the right characters in, in a squad, 
you wish to have a lot of players like, like Fernandinho because it's just the right mindset that he brings into this group. And um, yeah, he's, he's so important for us. I can't really, I can't really describe it. Uh, thank you. Uh, next we go to Alexis Hontag. Uh, hello, MK. Hi. Uh, some, some fans will be attending the game in Porto. What difference does it make for you players to have fans in the stadium, especially for a final? It's just great. I think it's it's especially a great occasion also for our fans, you know, of being able to be for the first time um, in the Champions League again in this season, uh, in the stadium and uh, straight away in the final. You know, this is I think uh, a great possibility for all the fans that are that are traveling. So for us, it's also great for us players. I mean, at the end we started to love this game because of the emotions you know that are transported from from outside to the pitch from the pitch to the outside so the connection you know between between people on the stands and and the players on the pitch uh, was always something that we were used to and then this got taken from us last year and um, it's been difficult to deal with it um, even though also you get used to this to this thing uh, but it's 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 great, you know, to see people coming back into the stadiums, not just in our own stadium, you know, also all around, all around the league and the Premier League, you know, um, to have people back in the stadiums to watch, even when you watch, you know, like from the television, you know, to, and you see people on the stands again. It's just it's just great, and uh, this is again a special occasion, I think, um, to have people back in the stadium, and I'm sure it's going to be a great atmosphere, even though the stadium will not be full. I'm sure it's it will be a great atmosphere and. Uh, we players, we players enjoy the game exactly like that, you know, exactly with people, with people on the stands cheering us. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, next, we'll go to Jack Gorn. Hi, Vilka. You were Hi. talking about the um, the group functioning before, and given what you've achieved this season, particularly since since Christmas, have you ever gone into a big game more confident than you are now? Um, I don't know because um, we play so many big games, but obviously this one is maybe this one stands out. Um, but um, <coughs> I don't really know to be honest. It's a difficult question. Um, I just feel like because everything has worked so well during that, during 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 all the season, during all the years for us, um, I just feel like we have the right dynamics now in the group, you know, and uh, everything is quite set. Um, and that's why I just feel comfortable, you know, and uh, that's why I feel that, that we are prepared for it. So it's just about repeating what we already did, you know, just uh, reminding ourselves again. Um, and not just on Saturday, already this week. Um, and then I will go into that game with the same confidence that I probably uh, went into all the games uh, before. That's the target. Is that the big thing with the, with the characters in the dressing room, though? You say the dynamics are all right. You've got these massive characters in the dressing room now. Yeah, I think so. I think it's about, you know, um, getting used to each other, getting used to all the individuals that you have. Um, and this, this, what, this is what makes a group strong, I feel like. And, um, you know, we, we voted for five captains in the beginning of the season. So obviously these, these people, uh, which I'm part of, have maybe a little bit more responsibility than than others, um, but it's always about bringing the whole group, you know, into the right direction. When you feel like there might be a little danger, you know, there is something, you know, in the air that you might be able to smell, you know, and so you don't want, uh, you don't want to lose someone, you know, on the way um, throughout the season. So this is this is very important, and all the players had difficulties, you know, throughout the year, so. Everyone had maybe a little issue. Some might be a little bit bigger. Some might be a bit smaller, but that's quite normal. We we all struggle, um, and it's about you know like bouncing back from struggles. You know, react reacting well from struggles, um, and the only people who can really support you um, are the, the the players that you are at the end uh, also on the pitch with. So that's what we always have to say ourselves. That uh, is our responsibility. 
Thanks, Jack. Uh, next, we'll go to Dom Farrell. Hi, OK. Hi, mate. Um, first, just want to ask about your fitness. You t- got a kick against Brighton. You didn't come on yesterday. Um, how's the like? Are you, are you feeling good? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I was a little bit um, cautious uh, in that Brighton game because um, because of the knick, n- knock on my knee, I started to feel all the muscles around a little bit. And didn't, obviously, I didn't want to pull anything on my muscle. So that's why we were a little bit cautious. But uh, I didn't miss any any training session um, after that game. So I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Dom. Martin Hardy. Hi, Ilkay. Hi, mate. Um, what would you say are the similarities and differences between Pep and Thomas Tuchel and, and how crucial will the battle be between them on Saturday? I think they are very similar, to be honest. Uh, and I'm a bit struggling to mention any differences because um, I think both are great managers um, tactically on, on such a high level of the game um, that both are always able to deal with possible difficulties that they might face during 90 minutes all uh, all uh, both of them are always able to adapt certain things into their game um, and i think both of them have uh, yeah quality players now to work with um, and this is also maybe a part why both teams reach the final because of the perfect mix uh, between having the the right manager and also the right players you know so I'm expecting uh, a game on a very high level on Saturday, uh, a very exciting game, two teams on probably the same same level, um, and that's what uh, will make it so exciting. Um, probably um, just little details will will decide the game at the end. Um, yeah, and of course we will try uh, to put uh, these de- details into our favor. Thank you, Martin. Uh, final question we'll take from Simon Evans before we go and fetch uh, Pep Guardiola for the second part of the press conference. Simon. You're on mute. Hi, OK. Hi, uh, mate. Yeah, I'm just... Um, every year, it seems, people, the pundits and the experts are saying this is Manchester City's <laughs> year. Um, it seems like the Champions League has been like... Even though you've had all this success at the club over the last few years, every year it's like they have to do the Champions League this time. And and, and last year, that defeat to Leon seemed to have a particular impact on on Pep and, and on the team. I'm just wondering, how how long did it take you to get over that defeat, and how much has it driven you this year? Has it been something that's that that went into this season even beyond uh, you know a few weeks after that game? Me personally, it took a while, to be honest, uh, because uh, it was, yeah, it was a big disappointment at the end of the day. It was something maybe we didn't expect also ourselves, you know, to, to lose that game. We felt quite good. We felt confident. And obviously, when you feel like that and you lose it, um, you're frustrated. You're sad. You might be a little bit angry. Um, but... Uh, at the end of the day, you don't have really a choice. And that's the good part, in my opinion. Um, so we went on holiday, we came back, we trained uh, just a few days, maybe, and we straight had to go into the next season. So we didn't really have a choice uh, apart from just trying again. Um, and um, yeah, I feel I feel this year, maybe a couple of crucial things changed for us compared to last year. I remembered just before as well, that um, as an example, against Monaco a few years ago, we conceded three goals at home. Uh, when we played Tottenham and they knocked us out, we conceded again three goals at home. When we played Leo, we conceded three goals. Um, and this year, we it seems to be that we are just so stable, you know, also in the back, you know, concede just a few amount of goals. Uh, and that just helps us, you know, to win even more. And um, yeah, um, I feel like we are very strong, we are stable, um, and this is so important in these crucial moments, you know, especially in the knockout stages and the big games, you know, being able to defend well, um, not to concede, um, is obviously um, yeah, a, a big advantage. And um, same, same as, as well for, for Chelsea, to be honest, because uh, they, are, they seem also to be very stable um, at the back. They also just concede few, few amount of goals. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe on Saturday it's going to be about, you know, 
who is able, um, you know, like to to deal better with um, a team that will that, that will defend uh, on a very high level.